Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Booking Holdings, Inc., ticker symbol BKNG. Booking Holdings is currently trading for $2,480.49 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is up more than 22%. This is dramatically outperforming the S&P 500 over this period, which is down. So we're looking at the business to analyze what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about Booking Holdings this year that's led to this kind of outperformance? Over the last five years, Booking Holdings is compounding their stock price at a rate of 3% annually. The company was hit extremely hard by the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. Over the last 10 years, Booking Holdings is compounding their stock price at about 14% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Booking Holdings is compounding their stock price at an incredible 30% compounded annually. Booking Holdings is a hundred bagger throughout this time frame. They've increased their stock price from less than $24 to more than $2,400. Booking Holdings is trading $200 below their 52-week high. The company is up more than $800 from their 52-week low. They have a little bit of short interest around the business with less than 1.5% of their shares outstanding sold short. And Booking Holdings is a large business. They have a $93 billion market cap. For more background about the company, Booking is the world's largest online travel agency by revenue, offering booking and payment services for hotel and alternative accommodation rooms, airline tickets, rental cars, restaurant reservations, cruises, experiences, and other vacation packages. The company operates a number of branded travel booking sites, including Booking.com, Agoda, OpenTable, and RentalCars.com, and has expanded into travel media with the acquisitions of Kayak and Momondo. Transaction fees for online bookings account for the bulk of revenue and profits. The company was formerly known as Priceline Group Inc. and changed its name to Booking Holdings Inc. in February of 2018. The company was founded in 1997 and is headquartered in Norwalk, Connecticut. So for our fundamental analysis today, we're performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of booking holdings based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. It's no surprise that as a travel booking company, booking was hit extremely hard by the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. Since then, as the globe has reopened, booking has seen their returns on capital improve pretty dramatically. And actually over their most recent fiscal year, they're pretty much back to where they were prior to the pandemic in terms of their return on capital numbers. Averaged out over this time frame, although their returns on capital have been lumpy because of the pandemic, booking is averaging about a 22% return on capital over the last five years. So this is a check here starting off on metric number one, as the business earns returns on capital that are about three times better than those of a typical business and one and a half times better than the 14% benchmark we're looking for. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the past five years. And this metric will be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We really get a better perspective of the COVID-19 pandemic's impact on the business as their revenues were cut in half and the company actually had negative free cash flows in 2020. However, again, the company has rebounded very strongly since then. The company has ended up growing their revenues by 12% over this five-year time frame. Their earnings over this period are down by 24%, but their free cash flows are up at a rate of 26%. So because their earnings are down, unfortunately, this means this is going to be an X here on metric number two, but it is great to see that the business had revenue and free cash flow growth despite their tough experience because of COVID. It's especially great to see that their free cash flows were up because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business. And a business can use its free cash flows to pay dividends, buy back shares, reinvest back into the business, make acquisitions, or pay down debt. And ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is going to be worth. 
Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at booking on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the business. So in our previous metric, we learned that their earnings are down 24% over this time frame. However, earnings are the numerator in this earnings per share equation. So we also want to look at what the company has done in terms of their shares outstanding, the denominator in this equation, potentially a very good sign for long-term shareholders in the business. Booking has actually bought back 17% of their shares outstanding in their last five years years alone, meaning that the company has bought back almost a fifth of their business. This is really important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business buys back stock by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business as a long-term shareholder, which ultimately increases the percentage of the business's profits that you'll be entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So this will depend on a couple of things, one of which is the price that these buybacks were occurring at, but another one is what would be a reasonable intrinsic value for the business, which thankfully we'll cover in the most useful part of this video near the end when we perform a discounted cash flow analysis of booking. However, because their earnings are down at a rate that's outpacing their share buybacks, this is going to be an X here on metric number three as their earnings per share have fallen over this time frame. While it's nowhere near dramatic as what the business was at during 2020, their earnings per share are still down. The company earned $76.35 for each share that they had outstanding last year. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years for booking. Unlike with their earnings, booking has grown their free cash flows over this time frame. So their free cash flow growth coupled with their strong share buybacks has led to very strong free cash flow per share growth for booking, meaning that this is actually a check here on metric number four. In their most recent fiscal year, the company produced the most amount of free cash flow per share that they've had in any of these previous years, producing $155.15 for each share that they had outstanding. So with a check here on metric number four, to recap where we stand currently, we're split evenly. We have two checks and two X's through our first four metrics for booking. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is using debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor potential outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their past five years. So booking has had negative net debt in all five of these years, meaning that after paying off all of their debt, the company is left over with cash in all five years. Right now, booking has about $1.3 billion of cash left over after paying off their debt. And over the past five years, the company has produced about $18 billion worth of free cash flow. And that was including their 2020, where again, the business had negative free cash flows, and that was a significant hit on the business. So with a cash cushion on their balance sheet and being massively cash flow generative over this time frame, this is a strong check here on metric number five, as it looks like Booking's balance sheet is in a healthy position and the company is pretty strongly cash flow generative as well. And in their most recent fiscal year, Booking produced the most cash flow that they have in any of these previous five years, producing about $6.2 billion worth of free cash flow. Our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may potentially offer us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of booking. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if booking were a private company. So booking right now has a $92 billion total enterprise value. We're going to start off a little differently here than we have in the past. To get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for booking, when we divide their $6.2 billion of their last 12 months worth of free cash flow, which are the highest that they've been at in any of these previous years, by their $92 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 6.7% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that is above that 5% risk premium for booking. So on a current basis, booking could be potentially attractive here. But the key metric we're looking for is what they've done on average to give us a more normalized perspective of their cash flows. So we learned in our previous metric that booking has produced about $18 billion worth of free cash flow over the last five years, meaning that in an average year, booking produces about $3.6 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $3.6 billion of their average free cash flow by their $92 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us about a 3.9% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for booking. So while that is about in line with the yield of 
the 10-year treasury. That's below that 5% risk premium we'd ideally be looking for. And so unfortunately, this is an X here on metric number six for booking, as the company doesn't look like it's giving us that risk premium based off their average free cash flows. So even though this is our final metric, you'll want to stick around as we try to come to a more concrete estimated intrinsic value for booking, and we cover the qualitative aspects of this business. Keep in mind that we're split here on an average and a current basis, and that this is neither a buy or sell recommendation of any security. This is one of our six metrics, and while these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful, as this analysis is meant to be taken in holistically. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze booking, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for booking. So a discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's free cash flows, and it's just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with booking's current free cash flows, and we're using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown these free cash flows since booking became a publicly listed business. It's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for booking. If we assume that booking can grow their free cash flows at a rate of 10% annually for the next 10 years, and then during the 10 years out after that, that this growth rate would be cut in half, and they would grow their free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually, we won't be adding in the company's tangible book value because that'll be skewed based off how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. So that's something you may want to dig into here as well. But if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments in addition to his margin of safety requirements, then it looks like at today's valuations of booking that a potential fair intrinsic value for the company is around $1,840 per share. So that's down about $600 from the company's current stock price, but that's well within the range of where the business has traded over the past year. Keep in mind a couple of caveats here, one of which is that this business has experienced a major disruption recently through the COVID-19 pandemic, which has mean that the business has had a low amount of predictability in their past. And as the company has sharply rebounded, it's hard to say exactly what the future will look like for this business, whether some of that demand will level off or continue increasing, especially especially just with a starting point here by looking at their financials. So that's something that you would want to dig in and do more work on. So please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the proper properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for booking, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with some of the key qualitative points around a potential long thesis for the business. Number one, booking is strengthening its network effect through organic initiatives and in fast growing markets like experiences, vacation rentals, flights, and payments, resulting in a fully connected trip. Number two, mobile application usage is increasing rapidly and booking has a dominant global position position, which aids the more than 50% of room nights that it's estimated to come from direct traffic. And number three, emerging markets should see strong online travel booking growth over the next 10 years, given low penetration levels and increased online usage where booking is well positioned. Then for some of the key qualitative points around a potential short thesis for the business, number one, booking gets a large percentage of bookings from Europe, which is estimated about 50% of its pre-pandemic total, which could be nearing a more mature growth phase relative to emerging markets. Number two, the still unknown extent and duration of inflation stand to materially impact demand for travel products offered on Booking's platform. And number three, Google's continued emphasis on placing its paid ads and meta search platform ahead of free organic search links could place marketing cost pressure on Booking Holdings. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective on the business. Now it's time for our summary. So with Booking checking the box on three of our six metrics today, it looks like Booking Holdings is a moderate candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research. The business earns strongly above average returns on capital coming in at about 22%, and that's even including the COVID-19 pandemic, which had a major impact on the business. The company has also grown their revenues and their free cash flows over the past five years, but their earnings are down. However, at the same time, the company has bought back nearly a fifth of their business, repurchasing around 17% of their shares outstanding. Booking also has a $1.3 billion cash position on their balance sheet after paying off all their net debt, and they produce quite a bit of free cash flow over the past five years, so it looks like the company is in a strong and healthy position in terms of its balance sheet. On a current basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value yield, 
It looks like Booking may be potentially offering a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. However, Booking's average free cash flow to enterprise value yield was just coming in at about in line with the yield of the 10-year treasury. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Booking, if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions would be accurate and applicable going forward for the business, and you were ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from Booking, then at today's valuations, it looks like a reasonable, fair, intrinsic value for the business is around $1,840 per share. So again, the company traded around those levels as recently as the end of October of 2022. So that's well within the range of where the business has traded within the past year. However, it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about the business. So with that said, that's it for today's Fundamental Stock analysis of Booking Holdings Inc, ticker symbol BKNG. We looked at the business today as a subscriber request and with Booking checking the box on three of our six metrics, it looks like the company is moderately attractive for further research. I'm happy to make an analysis of the company as we're looking at how they've rebounded since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. And so if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Booking with me and have a great day.